this generation. All I'm looking for is one person. One person who will believe me. One person who will step out. One person who will run to do what I'm asking. For this generation will see my glory. They will see my manifest presence. Hallelujah. This is the time. This is the season. The Bible says that the latter church will see the, 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 the former glory and diverse. What is that? Diverse. Hallelujah. The latter, <coughs> the latter rain and the former rain will be combined. Hallelujah. And God is saying that I'm going to combine the latter rain and the former rain in one shot in this generation. Do not be dismayed, for I, God, am about to do a great work in this generation. For things are happening outside. I am God. I am not afraid of them, for I have power to change even nations. For I am the Lord your God, for you will see my glory in this generation. So do not be afraid, because I am with you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 for I 
because the earth is yearning to see the true revelation and manifestation of the sons of God. I, the Lord, will reveal who I am in my servants for the glory of who I am in this generation, says the living God. Yes, for my glory will be revealed. Yes, my glory will be revealed. Hallelujah. 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 Yande kerebasha takarabasho. Remanda karabas seteke. Harabas seteke rebas sotoko. Hayabas seteke rebas seteke. Hayabande kerebas seteke. Am I not the God who created the heavens and the earth? Hayabas sende kereba. Hayamando korobo seteke. Yende kerebas sataka. Yes, I'm your God. Hayabas seteke. And there is no one beside me. There is no one beside me. For I choose to do what pleases me, says the Lord. Halabas seteke. Yema no korobo seteke. Hayabas seteke reba shotoko. Rende kereba seteke. Rinda karaba seteke. Yende kereba shotoko. Harabas sada kayaba seteke. Yema no korobo seteke. Hayabas sotoko. Glory be to God in the highest. Let the people of God rejoice because I am in the midst of them. A good God, that's who I am. That's who I am to you, a good God. That's who I am to you, a good father. Harabas seteke. Yende kereba sotoko. Rende kereba sotoko robo. I want you to hear, for that's who I am to you, a good father. A good father, that's who I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hayabas sotoko robo. For the Lord is good.
saying that I'm a guest. You are. This is my home. Amen? I just get to have two homes. Temporarily. That's it. That's all. Amen? Hallelujah. Good to see all of you. I'm so glad. I'm so in Calgary. We just arrived, actually, me and Aisha. We arrived at uh, almost 9 o'clock. Yesterday, we had a wedding. One of our daughters in uh, Toronto was married. So I only slept two hours. If I can shout it out, you can shout it out too. Amen? Amen? I came running. Thank God for Sandrine and Claudia. They've done amazing to make sure I'm on time. <coughs> and thank God for showers there. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hi. I get to spend two Sundays. Me, I'm happy to be here. Amen? I'm happy to be home. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. All is well? 
All is well here in Calgary? All is well in Calgary? The Lord has been good to all of us. He's been good to us, amen? He's been good to us. Hi. Let me take a little breath, amen? Those who don't know me, my name is Nadia. I'm the first lady of this house. My husband is... Uh, Hallelujah. It's not because I don't want to be here every Sunday. It's because the Lord has sent me to, do, to start a work. Amen? 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 And we all go together to do the work of God. This house is an apostolic house. We are here to empty church and release people to go do the work of God. Amen? Amen. The church in Montreal is doing good. They all send their greetings to you. Uh, they are growing. They are growing and they are becoming very strong. I've been telling all of them, you guys need to be here. September for the anniversary. You need to come see where you come from. Yeah. Amen. And I'm believing that many of them will be able to come so that we can just thank God for the great work he's been doing uh, in Cross Point, uh, Cross Point churches. Next Sunday, I want to talk about the vision so that you know what is the vision of this house, the heart of Apostle. For, for this house, for what God has called him for, amen? And I'm looking forward for the picnic. So, I know. So, all of you who want to know me, please be there on Sunday. Because we ha we'll have time to, you know, mingle, get to know one another, amen? amen? To fellowship in the house of God. Amen? Uh, I'd like to take an advantage to thank all our pastors here, our leaders, our board members for all the great work they're doing in supporting the vision, making sure the vision is going forward. Amen. I'd like to thank all of you for just being behind and just, you know, plugging in because God has a great work for this church. And if you are part of it, he has great work through you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I think that's about it, amen? You know, every time I come here, can I say a few things? I see faces, and then I'm like, oh my gosh, she's here. Oh my God, she's here. So I get distracted a little bit, amen? Because I miss you guys, so be patient with me. Be patient with me. It's because I love you. Okay, let's go into the Word of God. <clears throat> the last two Sundays have been powerful. I followed them. Did you, Apostle, did an amazing job on the video, amen? Yes. Me, I'm with you everywhere, every time, amen? Yes. Every time before I get into church, I'm seeing, I'm watching on video to see what you guys are up to. So I'm not behind, amen? amen. So remember when I went for holidays with our, my husband? <clears throat> Was it when last month or something like that? Yes. Am I on properly? Yeah? Okay. So when we went for a drive, I started thinking about, <clears throat> about God, Amen which I hope we all do. And then I started asking myself a question. I said, God, what was your original intent for us, your children, before the fall? Amen? Amen. What was it, your original intent? And sometimes, yeah, we all know, be fruitful, multiply, that's what Genesis says. But I decided I wanted to go deeper. I wanted to go deeper because I want to fulfill my God-given destiny, amen? amen? So I started thinking and meditating, and I was speaking with my husband, and I'm like, you know, what was God's intention for me, for the body of Christ, before the fall? So then I went to the, to the Bible, Right? I went to the Bible and I said, okay, I went into Genesis. In the beginning, God created. And then when he, he, he came to man, he said he, he created man in his own image. 
And when I read that, he created men in his own image. I said, God, what does that mean? That you created us in your own image. And I think sometimes we think that we know, right? But I decided that I don't know. Because if I make myself dumb, then I can learn, right? If I think I know, I can be taught, right? You lower yourself in front of God and let him reveal himself in deeper levels. Because with God, there's always deeper level. Hmm? I said, God, I'm going to allow myself to say, I don't know. What is the image that you created in? I, I know we are created in the image of God, but what does that mean? What does that mean? That God, you created us in your own image. So I got stuck there. And then I decided, for me to know in what image I've been created, I need to know the original image, which is God. I need to know God fully to know the image of who I am that he's created me in. No? Okay. So then I started, I said, okay, God, for me to know what image I've been created in, I need to know who you are first. Because if I can get to have a glimpse, not that I can get the fullness of who you are, I can have a glimpse of what you have deposited in my spirit. Right? Because I think there comes a time in the life of every Christian where we go beyond uh, what we read, what we listen, that we go one-on-one -on -one deep with God. So I spoke to God and I said, you know what? I'm going to put aside what I think you are because I want you to teach me who I am by knowing you, God. If we're going to go deep in God, we must know this God who has created us in his own image. And I know the more we go deep in God, the more we're going to go deep in who God created us to be. Amen? Amen. So I said, God, I want to start studying who you are. Who you are. So last time at the church, I was speaking about God. And I said, you know what? <clears throat> The image that you have of God is the most important thing in your life. What do I mean? Okay, the image you have of God is the most important thing. If me, the image I have of God, that he's a good God, I will always live in the goodness of God because I perceive him as God who is good. Now, if I live, if I have an image of God, Who's, who's very scary, scary and I'm afraid of him. I will always live in fear. I will always be driven, oh God, I'm afraid you're going to do this. If I don't do this, you're going to do this. Do you understand? And I come to understand maybe us, some of us or many of us, we have a wrong image of who God is in our lives. And that's why the enemy start coming to distract us to put fear in us, to put discomfort in us, because if we truly understood that God was really a father to us, there are certain things we wouldn't worry about. Amen? Amen. So, I was telling, I was speaking to my daughter the other day, well, a long time ago she was speaking, she's like, Mom, sometime I ask God, where did God come from? I don't know if you guys have had this question. And I come to understand that God is God. The Bible says that in the beginning, God. That's it, that's all. There's no beginning and there's no end to who he is. There's a beginning to who we are because we are created beings. Every time you ask God where are you from, you're putting him to a level of a creation. But God is not a creation. God is a creator. And it's important that we know that he is God. And he doesn't need to explain who he is as God. He said, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. So, to you, there's a beginning. To me, there's a beginning. But to God, there's no beginning. 
The Bible says it comes from eternity to eternity. He comes from everlasting to everlasting. And knowing that he is God, the creator, but not a created thing, it will help us to set our lives straight to this living God. Amen? Amen. This is very deep what I'm saying. Because the more we understand who God is, the more we go deep in him, the more we live a life full of fulfillment inside of us, and the enemy will not come to lie to us. So God is God whether we are asleep or alive. God is God. He doesn't need who we are. He, does, he just created us for our own, for his own purpose, the Bible says. For his own purpose. So the image of God is so important in the mind of a Christian. Amen? So my question to you is when you're afraid, is it because you have an image of God who is not able to take you out of that situation that's making you fearful. Could it be that we have created idols and we call them God in our lives, but it's not the true living God? And when we go deeper into knowing this living God, because the, know, the more we know him, the more we'll be free. The Bible says love liberates. God is love. His love will liberate us to live a life free of fear. Amen? Amen? So I was praying the other day. I said, God, what do you want me to share in Calgary? Because I want God to touch our hearts. And God spoke to me. He's so beautiful. Amen? He's so beautiful because God spoke to me. So, I mean, in that search of knowing God in who he is every step of the way, and I know it's only by the spirit of God we can know him. Our mind will never be able to comprehend the bigness and the greatness of who God is. But the Bible said that by his spirit, he can reveal who we are, who he is in our lives. Amen? So it's by his spirit. Anyway, so God gave me this Bible verse for you. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, I'm reading out of the message translation. Amen? The Bible said, before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of the day, I had holy plans for you. Amen? A prophet to the nation, that's what I had in mind for you. And God spoke to me. Actually, I had a, I had a vision. I had a vision, I was standing here, and I was reading this Bible verse. And out of my mouth, I said, today I'm going to speak about an all-knowing God. A God who knows everything. And that's what God wants you to know. That he is a God who knows everything. Amen? The God who knows everything. So to say God, to say that God is a God who knows all things, amen, is to say that God has perfect knowledge. Say perfect knowledge. He has perfect knowledge and has no need of learning from anyone or anything. He's a God who is omnificient. So he has perfect knowledge. Meaning what? God cannot learn anything from anybody or from anything. Because if he had to learn something from somebody, there's no, he's not God anymore. He's not God anymore. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 13 to 14, who has directed the spirit of the Lord? Or as his counselor has taught him. No one. Amen? With whom did he take counsel? Or who instructed him and taught him in the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? I hope as I'm reading these Bible verses, you're having a deep revelation of who God is. Because I'm, as I'm reading and I'm opening my mind, to knowing this God. There's something that always comes inside of me. And God just sh starts showing me the bigness of who he is. That we serve a God who is all-knowing. A God who is all-knowing. Can you believe it, my brother? He's a God who is all-knowing. 
anything about you, he knows it. He knows it. Love liberates. Amen? Amen. Love liberates. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Who has known the mind of God? And Malachi chapter 3, verse 6 says, For I am the Lord, I change not. He would be less of a God if he had to receive knowledge that he didn't possess. We wouldn't be sitting here listening to the word of God if God didn't have full knowledge about your life and my life, about where you're going, about where you're coming from. It would be a waste of time to come and pray to a God who doesn't have perfect knowledge because we need a God who can lead us. We need a God who can guide us. We need a God who can teach us. And this is the kind of God we serve. He is a God of all knowledge, a God of all wisdom, a God of all understanding. Amen? God knows everything. And you know the funny thing about what I'm saying? It seems so simple. But yet, when we live our life, it seems more complicated than that. Amen? The way we live our life, it shows how complicated it is for us to grasp that this living God that we love and who love us has perfect knowledge regarding your life, your future, your present, your children, your past, your disappointment. He knows everything. Amen? Amen? God knows everything. He doesn't learn as time goes. He's complete in wisdom, and he's not limited in knowledge. Amen? So now, Jeremiah chapter 1, 5. Before I shaped you in the womb, the Bible says, I knew you. Before he shaped you in the womb of your mom, God says, I knew you. Before you saw the daylight, he knew you. I tend to believe that God had a perfect image and understanding of who we were before we were born, before we were conceived. Amen? Amen? That he understood, he had already in his mind the plan for Getty. He had planned it, planned it out from the end, from the beginning to the end before he even conceived you through the womb of your mom. And I want this to set you free. You know why? Because when you understand that God knew you before you were born, you understand that it is God who has planned out this life for you, that it is not your plan. He said he shaped you. He shaped you emotionally, he shaped you intellectually, he shaped you physically because of the thing he had for you. He decided that Getty is going to look this, 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 she's going to be smart, this, 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 she won't know this, 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 because of what I have for her. And she, he decided that Getty would get married at a certain time, certain time in her life because of what I have for her. Because God is full of knowledge and understanding. And because he is the one who shaped us for what he has called us for. Yes. Say, he shaped, me. He, shaped me. he shaped me. He shaped me because he understood. Yes. Because he has full knowledge yes. of the plans that he has for me. He said, I shaped you in the womb of your mom. Listen, you are not here by accident. Regardless of what your parents say to you, that you are an accident, that I didn't plan you, that I didn't want you, God had planned you. God has shaped you. God had decided that you had to be born through a vessel in this world, a vessel whether righteous or unrighteous, a vessel whether crazy or not crazy. That's not the point. The point is God shaped you, and he decided that this person has to come through in this world. Who has known the mind of God? Only by his spirit we can comprehend the ways of God. Now we spend our time 
feeling sad and rejected because we don't understand. No, it's not mama and dad who created you. It is God who shaped you in her womb. He says, I knew all about you. And when he says, I knew all about you, it's not a knowing that when you're a baby, you're going to be like that. It's a full knowing of who you are. It's a full knowing who you are, whether you're sinning or not. It's a full knowing who you are, whether you're born again or not. God knows you. He said, he, said, he knows me. He knows you by name. He knows you from the depths of who you are. He knows the plans that he has for you. He knows why he shaped you the way he shaped you. This is the kind of God that we can not fathom it in, in our own understanding, but by the Spirit. We can understand that God, when he creates, there's always a purpose behind it. He said he shaped me in my mother's womb. Now, I'm not talking about physical, although physical is okay. Now, if you want to do surgery, go for it. If you want to cut your nose, go for it. Because the knowing of God, of who you are, is beyond your physical appearance. Although your physical appearance is also from him. It's the knower that goes deep from the depths of who you are. The knower that you alone, you don't even know. God knows you're rising up. God knows you're going down. Hallelujah, people. When you understand that God has shaped you, it doesn't matter what your teacher has spoken to you. It doesn't matter what your mama has spoken to you. It doesn't matter what your husband has spoken over you. God says, I know you and I have shaped you. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord, who is the father of light. You are good and you are a perfect gift from the Lord. Because God does not create anything that's not good. Say, I'm good, I'm perfect, and I'm a gift from the Lord. I'm the gift to this humanity. I'm a gift to my friends. I'm a gift to my husband. I'm a gift to my, this society, whether they know it or not. Say, so he shaped me. He formed me. And he knew me from the depths of who I am. You know, when you know that God knows you, you cannot perform anymore. That's why that spirit of performance has to end today. Because God knows your strength. He knows your weakness. There's nothing about you that can impress him. Because he knows he's the one that has put it inside of you. So stop working hard to try to earn the love of God. When God has accepted you because he has made you for who you are. Hallelujah. Ah, it's so deep. Yeah. Yeah, that's how deep it is in my spirit. That's why I'm free. Say, he knows me. He knows my name. What is the deepest cry of every human being? To be known. I want to be known. I don't want you to know me from how I look. I don't want you to know me by the mess I make. I don't want you to define me by the sins I have committed. I don't want you to know me by the mistakes I make day and night. I want to be known from within me that you go beyond my mistake, my flaws, my imperfection, and you know me from the depths of my heart. He knows me. He knows you. He knows the pain that you go through. Every morning he knows. Even if you put a mask on and you come to church with lots of makeup, looking all smiley, he sees the brokenness inside of your heart because he knows you. I may not know you, but there's a God who knows you. I may not understand you, but there's a God who understands you. I may not see you, but there's a God who sees you. He sees the pain inside of your heart. He sees the brokenness. He sees the pain. He sees the love. He sees the heartache. And he sees your desires. He 
He knows all about me. He knows all about you. He knows the pain that is deep. You know, he knows your aspirations because he's the one who put them there. He's the one who put them there. And that's the God that we love because he wants to bring it out. He knows you, people of God. And because when you know that he knows you, I'm not going to be afraid. If I mess up, I'm not going to run away from God because he knows anyway. I'm not going to try to play Christianity because he knows anyway. I'm not going to pretend to be who I'm not because he knows anyway. So I'm just going to be me and let this God who knows me from the depths of my heart do the changing, the changing, the transforming, the empowering. Hallelujah. I'm tired to play Christian life now. No, 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 no. There is a God who knows me. And there's a God who loves me. There's a God who sees the depths of my being. And there's a God who sees what he has placed inside of you. And this God, only this God we can serve. Only this God we can follow. Say he knows you. The Bible says, for he has good plans for you. To do you good. Who can create a nice microphone and throw it because he wants to do good use of it. So because he knows you and created you in his image, he want to make good use of who you are. He want to show and display the glory of who he is through your life, through your pain, through your mistake. So let the haters hate. Let the haters hate. Because there is a God who will take this microphone and use it properly. And who will bring a sound out of your life. A sound out of your pain. A sound out of your sickness. A sound out of your disappointment. He will not abuse you because he has made you an all-knowing God. Ah, Yeah, that's the God that we serve. This is the God that we serve. He has shaped me so that I can live for him. He has shaped me so that I can love him. He has shaped me so that I can be loved. This is the God that we serve. So don't let anybody lie to you. That he is a hater to you. He is always welcoming you. Because he's always in the process of molding, of touching, of comforting. Because he wants the microphone he has made to be proper for the proper use. He knows me. Come on. He knows me. He knows you. And the Bible says I had holy plans for you. Holy plans for you. The creator who has known you from the beginning of time has holy plans for you. He has set aside a purpose for you and me. Holy, set apart. Set apart. You're not from the mold. You've been set apart. Your life has been set apart. Your marriage has been set apart. Your children have been set apart. When you understand you have been set apart, you can't pretend to live like, like, life like everybody else because you understand you've been set apart. Come on, say, I'm called to be different. I'm called to be different. I'm called to look different. I'm called to love different. I'm called to do things different. Set apart for his own use. Set apart. Say, I've been set apart. I've been set apart. I've been set apart. That's why you see the enemy always trying to come to make you put down because he doesn't want you to know you've been set apart. You've been set aside for a holy use. Every purpose that is from God is a holy purpose because he is a holy God. That word holy means from another kind, from another kind. 
Listen to me. This generation doesn't need people who look the same because they are tired, because they want to be authentic. They want a full expression of who they are. So if we're going to do church and God right, we need to allow ourselves to be set apart the way God has set us apart. What makes you different? Embrace your difference because that's how God has made you. That's how God has set you apart. That's how God has set you aside. Say he knows me. He He said he knows me. He knows knows me. And he loves me for holy purpose. Are you hearing this afternoon? What I'm saying to you. Is it sinking into your spirit? Because you know what? We need to put aside every distraction of our lives and start living fully the God kind of life. But when you understand that he knows you, that it doesn't matter what people think of you, that those emotions and feelings that's from the depths of who you are, that he will bring them out at the right time for his own purpose. You start living a life full of fruit, glory to glory. He knows you and he loves you. If there's something you're going to get this afternoon, that there's a God who is all-knowing, that he understands what you go through, that he understands the pain you go through, that he understands the process he brings you through. And whether this process is dark or, 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 or light, it is still a process. And because of who God is able to take you out of a mess, he will give you a testimony for your life. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that this God loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. We spend times fighting with our destiny inside of us, fighting with the things that God has placed inside of us, fighting, fighting. But I'm here to tell you that the God who knows you, who has shaped you in your mother's womb, he will bring it to pass because he has set you apart for a holy job. Amen? Amen. Amen. Can we give a clap offering to the Lord for that? Because I really feel like it's sinking. Because this is a word of the Lord for you guys. Amen. Specifically, he wants you to know he understands and he knows that you know him. That you know him fully. That he's a God who knows everything. And because he knows everything, that you live a life in peace, knowing that whatever season you're going through is just a season. It's just a season. That he will put you, he will get you through this season. Whatever you're waiting on God, it will surely come to pass. God says, I have come that they may have life and life more abundantly. Amen? He did not come so that we may have life, life of praying night and day, crying night. You know what? The other day, huh? <laughs> he knows me. No protocol with me. I just do whatever I feel in my heart. Anyway, so you know what? Last time when I was here, I told God, I said, God, since I've known you, <laughs> I've been crying. I said, the day I decided to give my life to you, that's the day my misery started. Okay? And I said, God, please turn my mourning into dancing again. Amen? I don't want to be happy just only in the spirit. Uh uh. Uh uh. Not because I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I say, no, oh God, I'm tired. I'm tired. I say, 18 years is a long time. I don't know, maybe it's just me. I don't, I, because there was a process for my life that was different for every other people's process. And my process was very painful. That's it. Nothing wrong with that. God's ways, his path is perfect for everyone. But I said, God, 
Turn my mourning into dancing again. Turn my sorrow into joy. I don't want to come in your presence again crying for the same thing for 18 years. I say, do something. Give me another way to cry, but not the same thing, God. I don't know. That's how I talk to my God. But because he knows me, I'm okay to say those kind of words. Amen? Amen? He knows me. So, for you, who's been living with darkness and pain for I don't know how long. Amen? Yes. Let's believe that today. Yes. God is going to turn your mourning into dancing again. Yes. That is going to turn your sorrow into joy. Yes. I spoke something powerful to God. I said, you know, when I was here last time, I said, God, I said, I've sought your face all my life, but now I need to see your hand, God. I said, I know so many people seek you for what you can do, but I know I've sought you, your face, but now I need to see your hand. Amen? Amen. And I'm not talking about money. Money comes, money goes. Yes. Amen? There are certain things in our hearts that we want the hand of God to come and manifest his hand. Things that we can't even utter publicly because they are too deep to you and your God. I said, God, show us your hand. Show us your hand. We have sought your face. Now show me your hand. Your hand that heals your hand that transforms, your hand that delivers, the hand that empowers, the hand that strengthens, the hand that gives peace, the hand that gives joy, amen? That gives the power to keep going. Yes. He knows me. He knows you. Today, I say, God, we need to put an end to this season of darkness. Give us a full knowledge of who you are in the area of the life of your people. You know each one of them. You know what makes them cry. You know what they cannot utter publicly. You know what they cannot even speak to you, God. Do it and do it again. Because you are a God who is full of knowledge. You are a God who is full of power. You are a God who knows your people. You are a God who understands the suffering of your people. You are a God who understands the pain of your people and the struggle that they go through. That was my prayer today. That God may do it again. So he can put a new song in your heart. Another facet of who he is. Another side of who he is. That we live to see from glory to glory. From glory to glory. From, you know, from faith to faith. From success to success. From strength to strength. From ability to ability. God, show us who you are. Amen. This is the kind of God we serve. This is the kind of God we serve. Can we stand up in the presence of God? Hallelujah. 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 God, today, by the power of your word, we put an end to every season of mourning today, God. We put an end to every season of darkness today, God. We put an end to every season of crying, God. We put an end to a season of waiting, God. Let your people rejoice because you have been good to them. Let your people rejoice today because you are about to manifest your glory in their life, God, in their pain, God. Show them your sustaining power. Show them your miraculous ways, God. And make ways where it seems to be no ways. Make way where it seems to, see, to be no way, God. You are God who opened the Red Sea, open our Red Sea, God. 
You are God who opened the Red Sea, open our Red Seas, God. Because of the holy plan that you have for us. Because of the work you have set us aside for, God. God, show us our shape for your glory. Show us how you have shaped us, God. God, we put an end to a season of feeling unwanted because the God of all-knowing who has shaped you and created you wanted you. He wanted you, that's why he created you. He wanted you, that's why he shaped you. He wanted you, that's why he put you in your mother's womb. He wanted you up and down. He wanted you dark and light. He wanted you big and small. God, today we put an end to a spirit of performance because we cannot perform in your presence, God. We put an end to that spirit of competition, God, because you'll show us our shape, God. And when we understand our shape, we will not compete, God. Everyone in their own lane, Jesus.